but I want to ask, like, since you're seeing him as a baby face and just to sort of give a refresher of sorts, good luck in young baby faces were the thing. And if you were going to be a heel, you might be a grizzled older veteran sort of deal. You need somebody who's mean and nasty and all of that. We know that DiBiase is going to enjoy his greatest national success as a heel. Right. But you right, you really got to see him cut his teeth and become a star as a baby face. Did you prefer him as a baby face or a heel? And could you have even imagined when he was having success as a baby face? Hey, this guy's going to be a, a prolific heel one day. Well, normally Conrad, the, when you see a guy that's really proficient as a baby face and he or she are learning crowd psychology, crowd psychology is, uh, something that is, uh, you, you have, you learn crowd psychology, you learn the ins and outs of the business, not just one phase of the business and being a baby face or a heel, you learn it all. Right. Cause, cause you're not, you're not wrestling. You're not wrestling solo. You got a, you got a, a, guy, a guy in there dancing with you and he's going to, he or she is going to bring something to the table, uh, that could, you can learn from, uh, I just thought that Teddy was such a student of the game that any characterization of him would be successful. Cause he knew, he knew what he, his strengths, he knew his weaknesses. He, he understood the do the ins and outs of, uh, of, of the character of a, either a heel or a baby face. Uh, so I never, I wasn't totally shocked, but if I had to pick one character, one side of the fence or the other for him to play on, I would have said a heel. He was a great wrestling heel. And, uh, he, ha he also had, uh, that great voice. He didn't have a baby face voice it, it, stereotypically, you know, he was, had that big booming voice it was, it laugh. So uh, he was, uh, I thought he was a great heel. He was a wrestling heel and wrestling heels traits are very simple. They think they're the best wrestler in the match. Yes. Until they start getting out wrestled by the baby face at which time they're very willing to cheat to gain an unfair advantage, uh, uh, in their, in the, in the form of being a heel. And so that's, that was a psychology. You, you try to out wrestle the baby face, you brag about it, you laugh about it, you, whatever you about it, you feel good about yourself. And all of a sudden the baby face starts countering, starts out wrestling the heel. And now what, what does the heel do? The heel has got to cheat to regain an advantage and once get one step closer to winning the match. So, uh, but St. Mr. Mushnick got Teddy booked in New York. Uh, you know, Sam and, and, uh, I guess Vince senior were, were, were friends associates for sure. They've been around each other forever. Uh, you know, at one time, Mr. McMahon, the, the senior was a member of the national wrestling Alliance. Hmm. So, uh, they went to the little meetings together and communicated. They shared a champion when the champions, but Sam Mushnick booked the NWA champion. Sam was the booker of, the, of all that. He's the one that sent, you know, <clears throat> guys to your, much like Mr. McMahon sent, uh, Andre out. Right. Uh, Sam would book the NWA champion to send him out, uh, and, uh, that included Japan and around the world and so forth. So Mr. Mustick, uh, wielded a lot of power, not only as president of the Alliance, but controlling that title belt. And you know, it's a difference in having a hell of a week for your territory or not. And so Sam had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, credibility, a lot of power and, and Teddy was one of his boys. So, and, and that was a, a hell of a lucky break for Ted, quite frankly. 